Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Well, the Don Lemon L's keep stacking. I don't know what this guy was thinking, I don't know what the strategy was here, but like I mentioned in the previous video, Don Lemon had an actual opportunity. An opportunity handed to him on a freaking silver platter by one of the most powerful people on earth. Elon Musk handed Don Lemon a beautiful opportunity at redemption. Come on X, do actual journalistic work, be fair, be neutral, call out both sides, focus on important topics of discussion, basically act like a normal human being and not a CNN trained fake news soldier. But of course, as expected, Don Lemon fumbled. In fact, I think it's probably even more than a fumble. I think he scored on his own frickin' net. The utterly embarrassing Don Lemon saga continues. Remember during his initial Twitter meltdown video, he claimed that his free speech was under attack from the horrible, evil fascist Elon Musk. And he said the episode's releasing on Monday, March 18th. Tune in, people. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about is essentially what Don Lemon was telling us. So speaking of free speech, right? I thought the first person interview, no brainer, Elon Musk, the man who calls himself a free speech absolutist. I asked him to do it. He willingly agreed to the interview. Throughout our conversation, I kept reiterating to him that although it was tense at times, I thought it was good for people to see and hear our exchange and that they would learn from our conversation, learn more about him, learn more about me. But apparently, free speech absolutism doesn't apply when it comes to questions about him from people like me. What did we talk about? Why is he so upset? Does he even have a reason to be upset? Make sure you watch it on Monday on YouTube and everywhere you listen to podcasts, and you can decide for yourself. And here we are, it's Monday morning, or probably as you're seeing this, Tuesday afternoon, the Don Lemon interview hits, and what an absolute frickin' embarrassment for little Donnie Lemonhead this whole situation turned out to be. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so here's the value to the public conversation that Don Lemon is providing. Let's take a look at the incredible journalistic work that he's engaged in. I believe that it, uh, if... If we, if we lower the standards for what it takes to become a doctor. You're saying if we lower the standards, yes. but do you believe people are dying because the standards are being lowered? I, I don't or have think that lowered. is yet an issue, but it could become an issue. Okay. But the actual evidence in history shows the exact opposite. If you look at how minorities are treated by the medical system, oh. most, doctors, okay. most doctors now are white. And... There are lots of mistakes in medicine. So you're saying that my doctors are have bad medical care? I'm trying to understand your logic here when it comes to DEI because there's no actual evidence of what you're saying. No, I, I said, so if the standards, like, if, like let's say, uh, I think that particular thing was re referring to surgeons. Let's say a surgeon is, uh, is asked to, uh, a, <clears throat> a surgeon in training is asked to do it a series of operations out of the supervision of a senior surgeon, and they get a bunch of those operations wrong. If, 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 if that happens, and yet they are still approved to be a surgeon, the probability that someone will die, I think, at some point is high. Okay, I understand that, but that's a hypothetical. That doesn't mean it's happening. I didn't say it's, it's happening. You, you didn't say it was happening. I said, I said it will. You, but I said if, 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 if we lower status, people, people will die. Why respond to something or put something out there that has not happened? Because I could say, you know, I don't want it to happen. I think we don't want to lower the lowest standards. OK, if you look at the history of the medical industry, um, especially when it comes to black Americans, it shows the exact opposite. If you look at the T Tuskegee experiment and on and on, only 5% of doctors are in America are black. All of them are white. So are you saying that if the majority of doctors are white, are you saying that D and there are still these inequities, right? And there's and people still there's still mistakes. Are you blaming DEI for that? No, I'm I, I'm very very basically saying that if we lower standards uh, for what it takes to become uh, a board certified surgeon uh, or you know an oncologist or something where that where the the kind of disease we're talking about, if you make a mistake causes someone to die, then the, the more people will die than if we don't lower the standards. Therefore, we should not lower the standards. But why do you think they're lowering the standards for minority doctors or women doctors or? That's what the, the, the audit, that's what that article suggested. Yes, at, at Duke University. Okay. 
I lost IQ points watching that video. You know, in a way, that interaction kind of reminded me of Jordan Peterson's infamous Channel 4 interview with feminist host Kathy Newman. We all remember that gem. You cited freedom of speech in that. Why should your right to freedom of speech trump a trans person's right not to be offended? Because in order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. I mean, look at the conversation we're having right now. You know, like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth. Why should you have the right to do that? It's been rather uncomfortable. Well, I'm, I'm very glad I put you on the spot. <laughs> well, I'm very glad that I have well, exercised my, my point. You get my point. It's like you're, you're doing what you should do, which is digging a bit to see what the hell's going on. So and that you, is what you should do. But uh, you're you, exercising you think... your freedom of speech to certainly risk offending me. And that's fine. I think you, more power to you as far as I'm concerned. So you haven't sat there and... I'm just trying, I'm just trying to work that out. I mean... Ha, gotcha. You have got me, you have got me. I'm trying to work that through time. my head. Yeah, yeah, it took a while. So what you're saying is, Don Lemon seemed as though he was attempting to implement a similar tactic. So what you mean is that you're a racist because you oppose DEI. So what you mean is, you're saying people of color can't be doctors. No, dummy. Can't you hear the words coming out of Elon Musk's mouth? He's saying very simply that we've seen reports of lowering standards in the medical field and really across the board in all kinds of different fields in order to increase diversity. And he's saying that's a bad idea, especially in extremely specialized fields where people's lives could possibly be on the line. You don't want to be under the knife of a surgeon who technically isn't qualified for the job but barely got over the finish line because of the color of their skin. That's completely freaking insane. Every video of this interview that this guy releases somehow manages to make him look worse. Honestly, I didn't think it was possible, but he continues to shock and surprise me. You know, I think Joe Rogan said it best. What Elon Musk did with Twitter has totally changed the public conversation landscape for the better. He did a service to all of us. There is so much to talk about with Elon Musk. You could focus on all the positive, you could have a constructive dialogue, a constructive of conversation, or you could just simply default to typical mainstream media garbage hit piece tactics, screw talking about free speech or policy, just make constant implications that the person you're interacting with is a racist and also a drug addict. Wow, amazing journalism. Don Lemon shows the world once again how much of a monumental fool he is, resorting to cheap fake news tactics in an attempt to make Elon Musk look bad for partisan reasons. But the only person that ended up looking bad was little Donnie Lemonhead. Not only did he seem dishonest, but totally unprepared. He kept saying that all doctors are white. Where does that even come from? If we look at the breakdown, 54.2% of all doctors are women, 45.8% are men. The average doctor age is 48 years old. The most common ethnicity of doctors is white at 62.2%, followed by Asian at 18.6%, Hispanic or Latino at 9.5%, and Black or African American at 5 5.1%. Yeah, black or African American doctors are underrepresented. For whatever reason that may be, I'm not going to speculate. But the idea that all doctors are white or that whites are overrepresented is complete nonsense. White people account for roughly 60% of the American population and around the same in terms of demographic breakdown of doctors. The idea that there's a white racial disparity in the world of medicine is total fake news. The only group that's overrepresented within medical fields is the Asian demographic. The whole notion is completely idiotic. The idea that Elon Musk is somehow a vile racist because he doesn't believe that we should lower standards for surgeons is patently ridiculous. There's no racism issue, there's an academic underachieving issue. And if you want to solve that problem, you don't lower requirements and standards, but rather you focus on the core issue. Don Lemon is completely ignorant of the facts, but you don't exactly need the facts when you're focused on pushing propaganda and building narratives. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.